All right, tonight on Corny Camp Skill, we're outside. It's nice. It's not a winter anymore. And Xavier, do you know what we're doing tonight? No. Oh, yeah. The, oh, that's that. There's a canoe. There's a car. What do you think we're doing? We're going to drive the, the, the car into this lake. Good idea. Oh, we're going to learn tonight how to take a canoe and tie it to the car. Okay? Oh, that makes more sense. So let's start right off the bat. Hey, so I took the paddles earlier before we started and I tied them into the, the boat. So you can take your paddles and you put them in there and so that means you don't have to stick them in the car later on. Okay. So we're, we're going to put the car on top of the, the canoe. <laughs> Opposite. We're going to take the canoe and we're going to put it on top of the car. So the, the middle of the canoe is the, the portage bar. You want the portage bar to be more or less in the middle in between your bars. So the car we're going to start with is mom's car and it has a roof rack on it. So this is the easiest way to go is if you have a roof rack. Okay. You want the front or do you want the back? I'll take the back. You'll take the back. I'll show you here, Xavier, how we're going to put it on. So when we're going to put it on, we're going to want to flip it. Okay. Look at me. So when it's flipped, this will be the bottom of the canoe, and this will be the top. This is where your hand's going to be, this is where your top hand's going to be, okay? So if we flip it back over like this, or like that. So if I'm going like this, no, you're going to have to have your hand on this side. There you go. Now we stand up, we can flip it over. You see how your hands work? Keep your hand on the bottom handle, and then we're going to put it on top of the, the car. We're going to center it on the rack and it's got to be, oh, it's got to move way back. Pick it up. Hey, bring it down. You're not trying to put the canoe centered on the car. You're trying to put the portage bar in the middle in between your two racks. So it doesn't matter if it's sticking, the canoe sticking out in the back and it's not sticking out in the front. What's important is the middle bar in your canoe is in between your two rails. That is where the balance point is. Hey, so we're nice and centered. Hey dad, nice rack. Thanks. There's three different show ways we're gonna show you tonight to tie the canoe to the rack. Using a strap, using a rope, and using what you most people are going to ha end up with is going to be uh, cargo straps. Cargo straps is my least preferred one because the big buckles on them can scratch your boat and that. The most preferred is going to be the straps. I'll get the straps. So rope is just normal quarter inch rope. And then the straps, these are these straps there, Xavier. I got these at a canoe shop, uh, like a place that sells canoes and, canoe and paddling equipment and stuff like that. So they're specially made for doing that for putting boats on the top. So they come with this nice so buckle here. Do we unravel these? Not just now, but soon. So they come with this nice buckle here and they have a nice protector on there, right? So we're gonna use these first because this is the easiest way. So if you can, get these straps, right? Oh. Come on over here there, Xavier. No, over here, you go to the back and I'll stay at the front. So now, right here, right here, buddy. So unravel. Your strap. All right. So we're just going to take our strap and we're going to throw it over the car it, and leave the buckle on there. Oh, I thought I was supposed to throw it on the buckle side. No, no. Keep the buckle in your hand and then throw the strap over. That's close enough. All right. So you want all the strap to be over there. You just want the buckle to be sitting here like this. Need some help? No, I'm good. There we go. There. Okay, good. So let's go to the other side. Now we're going to grab that strap that came down. We want to keep the strap nice and flat like it is. And we're going to pass it underneath the roof rack like so, keeping it as close to the side of the canoe as possible. Then we're going to throw the rest back over, keeping the strap nice and flat. There you go. Okay? Yeah, you're doing good. So we'll throw the strap, the rest of the strap back over.
We're going to do the exact same thing we did on that side, on this side. Pass the strap underneath, keep it as close as possible to the boat, and then you're going to pass it through the buckle. I'll show you there, Xavier. So watch. Watch me before you do it. Lift up the bottom of the buckle, press down on the toggle, push it up through the bottom. Are you doing it? Yeah. Nope, not through there. Not through there. Through there. Yes. Ah. Now push down on the toggle and pull at the same time. Okay, there you go. And so you said that this is bad because it like, the ones with buckles are bad because it damages the kayak no. canoe? These ones are good because they have this little protector strap on there. Ah. So these are the good ones. It's the cargo ones that I don't like and we'll look at those in a bit. Tricks to remember here is to keep the strap as close to the boat as possible. It'll be the most, the best you can get it. Now we're gonna leave the strap up a bit higher and we're gonna tighten it down. Put it nice and tight. Now get it tight. I'll show you a trick for tightening that there. Watch. Watch, Saver. Then you can try it. Hold this side so it doesn't move and then pull down ah. on that one. Okay? Because if not, you pull on it and that side moves. So hold that side and pull down tight. Give it a try. No. What did I just tell, show you? No. Well, how am I supposed to tighten it without pushing <laughs> it on the button? Stop. <laughs> yeah, I just showed you. And remember, if you pull, just like that, the whole strap moves. Put your hand here. Oh, there. And then tighten down. So try that. You oh, see that's how it works? Easy enough. Yeah. I thought I was supposed to push no, the no, button. No, no, let go of that. Because what happens is, if you're pressing on this when you're tightening, by the time you let go, you might let oh. some slack into it. Okay. By doing it like that, you're just pulling it nice okay. and tight. What about this, the rest? Good question. What do we do with the slack? The slack, we're going to take it, we're going to roll it around the top of the car. Then we, and we have a little bit left, we're going to make a bunch of little knots here. Nod, nodding is not something I can do. Do it as best. You, let's see how you do it. Give yourself one. Give you. Give yourself a bit more slack. There you go. Now nod it. There you go. Make another one exactly like that. That's really good, Xavier. And you're not here, the this, this slack is just slack. It's not holding anything, it's not holding any pressure on it or nothing, so it's just slack. So this is perfectly fine, it won't go anywhere. And that is your canoe on your roof of your car. It's as nice. simple as that, with a roof rack. It's super easy. Hey dog. A lot of people ask me there, Xavier, that do they need to put a rope from the front of the car down to the bumper? And you'll see that a lot of people doing that with their canoe. With the way that we did it with a roof rack and the way that we tied it with those straps, you don't need to do that. I've driven thousands of kilometers with this kayak, this canoe actually on the top of the car, and I've never had an issue, like in winds, crosswinds and all that. And I found that this is the most secure way of doing it. If you want to, you could go ahead and do that. And we'll look at that technique in a bit, but you don't have to. Okay. This is perfectly fine. Learn something? Yep. Awesome. Thanks, Xavier. You're welcome. For the kayak, you're going to need some special foams. Most um, outdoor stores, hardware stores, Canadian Tire, they sell these foams. So these are a kayak foam. Of course, for putting a kayak on your roof, you can go, you know, all out and get the special J-hook racks and all the different kinds of stuff they have out there. But these foams are simple and that. But you, you'll, you will need some kind of foam on here. At one point, I even used... Uh, pool noodles to do this but the foams are a lot better because a kayak has a round bottom and you don't want to distort the bottom especially if it's a plastic canoe or a fiberglass canoe you, you can hurt the boat itself you want to give me a hand there Spencer so we're gonna to have to go <laughs> around this sucker yeah so there's a nice handle there yeah exactly so I'm gonna step through the boat <laughs> So same kind of idea, up. No, no, it's staying flat. Oh, I see. Yeah, it doesn't go upside down. Awesome. 
The kayak is the same idea as the canoe. You want the center of the kayak centered in between your, your rails, your racks. So the cockpit that you sit in, where you put your butt, is the center of the boat. So put the center of the boat in between your roof rack. And then it's just simply tying it up the exact same way we did with a canoe. The kayak, you don't put it upside down though, you put it facing upside right. And a little pro tip, if you're gonna be traveling any distance like this, you want some kind of cover over your cockpit because it's gonna catch in the wind, you'll get like this big hum, and you'll be going, what the hell is that noise? And it's just the wind moving around inside the cockpit. So if you're doing a long trip, cover it up. They sell covers for that and they're worth their weight in gold. This evening, I also got Spencer here, my buddy. He was asking me the other day where I got the thought for this is that he was asking how do I, I want to go on a canoe trip and how do I put my boat on the car but I don't have a roof rack so we'll cover that. The first thing we got to do though is a lot of cars these days they have these antennas in the back and speaking from experience you don't want to break your antenna <laughs> which I've done in the past. Well these types of antennas most of the time they just unscrew. Okay? They can be easy, so you want to pinch the base. You want to hold it from the base, don't grab it from the top. Grab it from the base and pinch the base as you're unscrewing okay. it. And then the best place for that is in the glove <laughs> compartment, so okay. you don't lose it. Yeah, that's yeah. a good idea. Let me put it in now. <laughs> like I'll go a wand. grab some foams and then we'll, we'll rack up the... That's your wand. <laughs> if you've got a canoe and you want to put it on your car and you don't have a roof rack on there, you're going to need some foams. Right, so these are just really simple foams. Same thing. I should get, I should be like commandeered. No, what's the word I'm looking for? Commandsty. Sponsored. Oh, yeah. Sponsored by Canadian Tire. <laughs> I keep saying Canadian Tire. We're going to put these roughly where they think they're going to go. Well, they just, they've got a nice little slit on the side there. And you, if you notice, it's like a, a bit of like a C. Like one side has more space more right. sides than the other. So the one that has more lip goes on the inside because there's more lip on the inside. Okay. So you just finagle that on there. Somewhere and around fit. here. Uh, I'd come, so the center bar is here, so okay. I'd stay about a, yeah, about a foot away from the center bar on your side. So we got four of these to put in. Okay. And I have lost these before on the highway. They've, <laughs> huge crosswind and one came flying off. <laughs> That's where the pool noodle came in. <laughs> I even once to use the packaging from a computer oh, really? to make some. Well, I've noticed that these, I went to Canadian Tire, these were $50. Oh yeah? For four, for four of these. I've had these <laughs> since the 90s. Okay. So I've had them for a little while now. The, uh, yeah, to put it on the roof of the car, we're gonna do the exact same way. So top hand there, bottom hand there. So then we can flip it and then we'll readjust once we get the canoe on the roof. We'll go and see. I'll come over on this side. Yeah. We're gonna see where the portage bar is. So for this, remember, we're putting the portage bar in between the rails. Right. This is gonna be different. We're gonna put the portage bar in the middle of the roof structure itself. Mm. Okay, so we're gonna have to back it up a bit. Okay, let's take a look. Yeah, that's about right. Now, the, uh, you'll see like over here, you're seeing your roof is deforming a bit. Right. Because there is not a lot of structure in the roof in the front. So this is where we're gonna adjust the pads. And it's the exact same thing in the front. There's not a lot of structure here and it moves around a lot yeah. when you press on it. But the front is right. way more okay. solid. So we're gonna move the front pad to the front and the back yeah. pad to the rear. Yeah. Move this one. Yeah, slide it along. Okay. One thing you wanna watch out for and you're gonna have to play with is gonna be the space here. You uh -huh. don't want <laughs> it touching the roof of the car. So I'm just gonna come in a bit more. Let's see on your side, yeah. Now if you had a, an extra pool noodle, noodle or something, could you just throw it in there just in case? Yeah, exactly. If you're worried about it, just get a pool noodle and sli slice it. Pool noodles are cheap. You get them at yeah. Dollarama and all that. Right. So cut the length you want, slice it down the middle and <laughs> just put it right on there on the rail. So let's fix the other side. Now we'll, we got it on there, we got it set. We'll do this one with the straps. These are the, 
I don't like using these. Here, I'll give you those two. So the cargo straps is my least preferred method. Uh, there's a couple of reasons why. The, the buckles are huge and they tend to get in the way sometimes. And also, like you had mentioned earlier, you can over tighten this very easily, right? right? But what we're gonna do so that the buckles aren't rubbing on your car or the buckles aren't rubbing on the boat, we're gonna put these on the inside of the vehicle. Okay. Okay. So it does, if you're a tall guy like <laughs> me, you gotta place it strategically yeah. so your, your your head's not banging into the buckle. Okay. Right. So we'll just, we'll open up the doors. We'll do like we did or like you saw me do with Xavier there. Yeah. We'll throw that over top and let the buckle come on the inside. Let it hang on the inside a bit, then we'll close the door on it. All right. Remember to keep the, the strap flat, like your strap is not very flat there. Good. Now we go open, open the door and very important, go through the door, not the window. I saw some numpties do this once. They were like moving a mattress or something like a, they bought a mattress and they had it through the windows. And every time they wanted to get in and out of the car, they had to climb through the window. So I, I was having a good laugh at them. All right, so we're gonna go inside the car. Here, how about I do the front there so Max can see easier? Yeah. And then... You got me there, Max? This is where you can adjust where you're going to want the buckle. So probably line up the buckle so you've got it more or less in the middle of the car. And when you're going to bring both pieces together, you can hook them just simply like that. But if you want some extra protection, you finagle it and you can get both hooks in at uh -huh. this. Maybe you're better than me at doing this. <laughs> there we go. I got both hooks in at the same time. Okay. And then we'll grab our buckle. To get the buckle through these, this is so this is your typical cargo strap. You go to Home Depot, Canadian Tire, you can sell, you know, they'll buy these packs of four for like 20 bucks when they're on special. Yeah. They're really easy. So you just pass it through. You open it up so you pass it through the middle and then you're gonna wrench on it a bit so remember we said we don't want to over tighten right but we don't want there we go you know when you can and when you can play a bit of music on it, <laughs> that's when I start to say it's not too bad. The banjo test. Yeah, and then we'll go outside and we'll have a look. Okay. We're standing outside. So yeah, you've got the banjo test there. And the good test is the front to back. If you push on the front, it shouldn't move, and if you push on the back there, Spence, give it a good push, it's not moving. Okay, you're hearing wee, 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 and that's, that's okay. When we were talking about roof rack, I don't know if you were paying attention when we were talking about the roof rack, I was saying keep the strap as close to the, the boat as possible. Right. Here we can't do that just because of this. Yes. What's gonna happen is you can get some wind working in here, and you start to hear this wah, 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 wah. So what ha what's happening here is that it's vibrating at a high speed and okay. it gets really annoying. It's not dangerous, won't come apart or nothing, but it gets annoying as hell. And also it can start to work on the paint of your car. Okay. What you can do is take little pieces of uh, cloth or whatever you got and then run it underneath there to protect it. Also, it's not a bad idea if you want to do that on the inside, run a piece of cloth. Yes. If it starts to rain, you will get a little bit of water that will come in through here. I've had that <laughs> issue before in the past. But I'll show you the trick for getting rid of that hum. Well, this is a good idea, what yeah. I'm gonna show you, to always put in there when you're doing this. So right from the start, when you get to this point here, yeah. put a couple of twists exactly like that. Then tighten it back up. Okay. 
and then that will get rid of that vibrating noise. Okay. I put two twists in there and you see it came out tight. You, if you put one twist, it'll work. Yeah. Okay. Two twists might be better, might not. Try it. <laughs> you know, it all depends. And it was a trucker that showed me that trick. Oh, really? They know what you'll see it. About. You'll see it when you're going down the highway. You'll see a big van going by, yeah. and you'll hear, you'll see the the straps moving, vibrating. Wom, 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 wom. Right. And that's all they need. They just put a. If you put a strip in there, uh, one turn. I put two here. One too many. If you put one turn, you'll get rid of it. Okay. You do that on both sides. No, no, I've noticed that you can buy like various strengths of straps for yeah. a canoe. Is, is any strength good or? Are you going to need a minimum or? So I wouldn't buy my straps at Dollarama, <laughs> <laughs> but anything that you get at Canadian Tire, Home Depot, you know, reputable hardware store, some of like that is going to be perfectly fine okay. for the amount of strength that you're putting on there. You're not, you know, you're not pulling your Jeep out of the mud with this and you're not right. rock climbing or nothing like that. Yeah. So I wouldn't be worried about it. Got it. Yeah. I've these, I've had these for years and that, and they're serving me very faithfully. Okay. So strap at the front. Let's talk about a strap at the front. Okay. Like I was saying to Xavier, when I first started, I'd put a strap at the front, a cross strap at the front like yep. that, and a cross at the back, and that's what I would go with. And Karen was with me when I was doing this. We were, we were just starting the date, and I, you know, <laughs> it didn't look good on me. The boat that we had tied to the roof, we were going across the bridge in Quebec City, and a big straw, a crosswind came across, yeah. and I almost lost the boat right off the car. Oh, so it was more important to have those straps right. on the side than it is front and back. Yeah. Just like this, you're perfectly fine. You'll be driving down the highway, you'll get a strong wind or something like that, and you, you might get nervous and stuff and it might move around. So you might want to have something in the front. We'll open up the hood and we'll have a look. Before, yeah. you you used to be able to, you know, cars, when they were built <laughs> a bit tougher, they didn't have all this plastic in them. Yeah. And that and they used to always have tie-down points. Well, it was, wasn't a tie-down point, it was a, a tow point. Right. Nowadays, it's all plastic. There is toe points, but you got to remove the plastic to get into the yeah. toe point. It's a pain in the butt. Yeah. So there's a better way of doing this. Okay. Let's open up the hood. So there's these these straps that you can buy these from from a store and that. And this is to be able to tie down your car to the use the holy moly i'm tripping on my words tonight <laughs> so you be able to put this on the inside and then bring the strap out to be able to tie your boat to it okay. i've never used these would i use it not really i don't i don't think you need to but you might want to okay so you've got to find a spot in there where every car is different so everything's going to be a bit different well, once you close the hood, this won't come out because of the nice little loop on there. Okay? So you don't want to have it around anything that's going to... Okay, let's close the hood. There we go. And that's nice and tight. So you want to make sure when you're putting it in there that once you pull it out, pull on it a bit, it's not going to pull on any wires. Yeah. You know, you're not going to be pulling yeah, yeah. on your coolant hoses <laughs> or your air conditioning hose while you're in there. So all I did was I put it back there, made sure it was not going to back anything, yeah. and then I Shut closed it. the hood. So the idea is the toggle on the back yeah. is what keeps it from coming out. Right. That's the idea behind it. You could make one of these yourself, super yeah. easy. Yeah, you know? I was thinking that. And I, that's what I would do. I would just get a strap like that and get a piece of PVC pipe yeah. and just boop, put it through there and then Bob's your uncle. <laughs> yeah. Rope. When I was just using, when I started out, like I was saying, I'd put like a, a cross in the front here. Right. And then I, I wouldn't have anything in the middle. If you've got stuff in the middle, you don't have to put a cross. Because what you're doing here is you're just controlling back and forth. So a simple rope like this is going to be perfectly fine for you. So you got most good canoes all have most, <laughs> I, I always have to say stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> good, most quality canoes in that will have a handle, a grab handle in the front. So you tie a knot in the front. Don't know knots, tie lots. <laughs> okay? If you're in doubt of your knot tying skill, just keep going. Make a lot of knots and you'll be good. So the knot that I put in there was a uh, nerd chise. I know most of my terms in French. <laughs> this is a pain in the butt. Ah, uh, it'll come out later. Somebody will probably go, hey, new chise is that. We're going to make what we call a tension hitch on here. So we just pass it through the loop here. Yeah. But around the middle of the rope here, we're going to make a loop. So there's different ways of doing this. We can make yeah. an overhand knot. 
or you can go right fancy. I'll show you the two different ways. So go on fancy. So you see, I bring it close like that. Yeah. I just make myself a, we call this a bite. Okay. I make a bite. One, two. And I come up through the back, through the middle. <laughs> <laughs> you lost me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So we're going to do it the super, super simple way. All right. Then there's also, you can make two twists. Yeah. And come through the middle. That's another way of doing it. There's a thousand ways of doing this. Right. Okay. That one, the fun with that one is it's slip knot. So okay. same thing. You make yeah, two wraps. Yeah. And then the third time you come around, right. you go up through the middle. Yeah. And it makes it makes you a slip knot. Cool. Right. So I'll stay. And then the easiest one of them all, just make a knot. <laughs> okay. That's the easiest one of all. And then if you want to get really difficult, you make yourself a... Uh, a mountain butterfly. <laughs> so this what knot is, I had to learn that on my rock climbing course. Okay. And I knew how to do a clove hitch, but I didn't know how to do that. And they gave me, uh, the guy said tomorrow morning, if you show up and you can't do this knot without looking at it, you fail the course. <laughs> okay, so we pass it through. Yeah. And then we come back over. So this is what the tension part is. So right. Once you got it through the hoop like that. Yep. You can put some good tension on it. Okay. And then what we call half hitching it. Yep. And you can half hitch it a bunch of times. And then it's not going anywhere. Okay. Now the slack, the slack with that, you can easily make yourself a little knot here just to get the slack out of the way. Cool. There we go. And Bob's your uncle. Right on. It's as simple as that. It's not too difficult. This method here that we just showed, that I just showed, you can use that exactly. If you're tying it to the roof of your car, you can use rope too. Okay. The problem with using rope instead of a cargo strap is that when you close the door on this, yeah. it doesn't close as well. I see. So you can use rope, is you, uh, you use it on a roof rack. If you don't have some nice straps, you can use this, the exact same technique that we showed. Tie it, to, tie it at one end. Put a little tensioning strap, yeah. knot, tensioning knot in there, pass it through, then tighten it up. You can do the exact same thing. Right. And was this knot, is that called a bowline? In, in bowline! Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's it. Okay. That's a bowline. Okay. Cool. Nerd chise in French, bowline in English. Then somebody's going to say, no, it's not a nerd chise in <laughs> yeah, French. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah, okay. There's many names for it. <laughs> And uh, that strap that we had, we can do the exact same thing in the back. Right. The same idea with, with this in the back. Stick it in the trunk, close the trunk, and then we can put a tensioning hitch on the back there again, and it, you'd be bomb proof. Yeah. Okay. So with this set up here, you know, you could go a long distance, no problem at all. Okay. Good, good to know. go? Yeah, good to know. Awesome. <laughs> Let's put the kayak on your car just to give a good demo. Okay. Well, the foams, they go in the front, in the back, in the middle. We're going to do an adjustment. I'd put it a bit more forward. So yeah, you probably want it. Yeah, exactly. Now here's the tr here's the hard part. If there's just two of you or there's just one of you, when you're doing this, <laughs> the wind tends to blow these off. Yeah. So if okay. you're doing this on a windy day, it's a pain in the ass. <laughs> yeah. So same thing, like we're doing on the car. We want to get the cockpit in the middle, and then we're going to come over and adjust. Yeah, this one here. I Probably put forward a bit in this one here. I can back up a bit more. And we got a lot, we got good space here. Depending on the car, same kind of thing. Yeah. And uh, when you're gonna start strapping them down, you might notice also that this wants to come to touch. So you gotta stop and you gotta re, uh, restart again. Okay. The, um, for, for a kayak, I didn't talk about this in the last one. Let's get some straps out. And we'll just use the easy straps. We'll do the same kind of idea. Just wanted to show the positioning of the straps. So throw yours over. And then same thing, we'll put the buckle on the inside of the car. Okay. Same idea as we did last time. Run the buckle inside, keep the buckle on the inside. It's a good idea to keep the buckle on the inside also because you can keep an eye on your buckle. Did you put yours tight? I think so. That's not tight. <laughs> Cinch it down a bit more. Well, hang on. Wait, we forgot to put some. We forgot to put a twist in there. 
Put a twist. Oh, on this side. Yeah, we got we got to put a twist on each side, but we really need a twist. How's that? Good. Excellent. What I wanted to talk about was the placement of the straps. If you see the cockpit, it has a slight lip on it. All, all these cockpits have a lip on them. Yeah. So if you put them on each side of it, like they are so in the front and the back, it'll it'll give you a bit more of that hold down from mm -hmm. the front to back. Okay. And it won't move around as much. And that's about that's that's how easy a kayak is. A friend of mine asked me just yesterday, he goes, Rick, can I get two kayaks on the roof of my car? I'm like, ah <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't try it. Because you'd have to I've seen them stacked one on top of each other. Yeah. And like the guys there, the guys that were doing it, they were having a good time and all that. Some two young guys, they said, yeah, yeah, let's just put our boats in a 69 <laughs> and we can put it on the roof. And I was looking at them, oh my God. <laughs> but it's, if you don't have a roof rack, it's almost impossible to get two kayaks on the roof of your car. Same yeah. thing, canoes, when I was 19, yeah, I got two canoes on the roof of a car <laughs> once without a roof rack. Jeez. It didn't look very nice, and the guy at uh, Algonquin Outfitters looked at me kind of funny. <laughs> and then I dropped the canoe on my girlfriend's car. Nice. She didn't notice the dent in the hood, and oh. she thought she bought the car with it, so I never mentioned it to her. <laughs> okay. But the, that's it. Oh, let's do the test. Do a little test. Okay. Oh, yeah, that's solid. Yeah, the 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 side to side will give you a bit, a yeah. bit, but it's the front to back. Oh, you I give see. a push to front to back, and it won't move. Like if you push back oh, on yeah. it, yeah, yeah, that's the most important. You don't want it. Boom. Okay, that's it. Good. Thank you. <laughs>